Hello, hello, more dimmers here and welcome to the semi-finals of the Earthings Masters and uh, quite shocking results in the quarterfinals because Magnus Carlsen got eliminated. Jan Nepomniasi, the winner, one of the editions of this online tournament, also got eliminated. The same with the Hikaru Nakamura, who was uh, also eliminated by Levon Aronian and Wesley. So, who was the winner of the last online tournament where he won against Magnus Carlsen uh, also got eliminated by, by Maxime Vachiel Lagraf. So in the semi-finals we have Levon Aronian versus Maxime Vachiel Lagraf and Taimur Rajabov, which the game I would like to show you plays against Daniel Dubov. Uh, Daniel Dubov with the white pieces, open with the e4, we have c5, Sicilian defense, knight f3, knight c6, d4, so open Sicilian, uh, c takes on d4 and now knight takes on d4. Uh, and here we have e5. e5 is kind of accelerated Sveshnikov. Now, uh, Sveshnikov would be after knight f6 uh, and knight c3 and then play e5, so that's one of the options, but we have Leventhal variation. It was played in 1834 for the first time probably by De La Bourdonneur against their famous match uh, with McDonnell. Uh, and then it, it got forgotten uh, because Morphy and Stein it said that Sicilian defense is not really, you know, that great. Uh, so a lot of players just follow, you know, the best players in the world. But in 40s, so, uh, you know, 80 years ago, uh, Soviet players just reactivated this and found all of them of the, all of the new lines now uh, we have knight b5 which is pretty natural and now Leventhal variation follows with the a6 um, but this of course means that this knight can jump to d6 uh, and after bishop d6 queen d6 then queen f6 uh, trying to exchange the queens which is of course possible uh, but most of the players goes for uh, queen d1 and after knight g2 e7 the game can continue of course so this is the Leventhal variation main line however um, after knight b5 there is another move possible and it's d6 Kawashnikov variation now the knight also uh, cannot come to d6 so that's the that's the idea uh, developing the knight very simple idea now the knight would love to jump to c7 and fork the the rook and the king uh, but this is why a6 is played in the in the next time this knight cannot go to d6 anymore so knight a3 and now we have b5 with the idea of b4 forking two of the knights so knight d5 uh, and now knight f6 attacking at this pawn uh, so the knight has to be pinned bishop e7 unpinned uh, and now bishop f6 eliminating the attacker of the pawn on e4 and after bishop f6 we gonna have c3 so making a space for the knight and the knight can come uh, to e3 uh, and then to very na natural outpost on f5 or supporting uh, the knight on d5 so two ideas uh, so the main idea here of course is the is the castle and after knight c2 bishop g5 taking under control this e3 square so if the knight jumps there uh, it's possible to to actually eliminate that knight but that means also black would give back the pair of bishops so uh, this is possible some of the players play this way as uh, some of them are not but yeah bishop g5 is the main idea however Temur Rajabov goes for bishop g5 immediately uh, and now we have knight c2 so uh, of course the the idea is pretty obvious and now we have rook b8 so Temur Rajabov uh, wants to push a5 and then b4 soon after uh, and he cannot do that as this pawn on b5 is hanging so this is why we have rook b8 and now very natural to prevent that is a4 this is the main idea here uh, so black have to react there is no time uh, to make all of this uh, push uh, most of the players play b takes on a4 uh, and then knight can jump to b4 exchange the knights and now we have double attack on this pawn uh, but there is also another threat uh, threatening the, this nice fork so uh, black have to give back the pawn after bishop d7 uh, bishop a6 and uh, after queen a5 
mostly we have queen d6 and it looks like extremely sharp line uh, because now the rook is under attack the the king cannot castle so it looks like very very sharp however 83 percent of the games ended in the draw so this is very well known a very complicated line but also a very well known drawing line so if you want a draw against super grandmasters go for this line uh, maybe you would have some some chances but you have to be uh, extremely extremely precise uh, however we have h4 by daniel dubov so daniel dubov uh, goes for another it's nothing new it was played couple of times and now the best answer for black and it also was played couple of times uh, is actually take this pawn this is the free pawn what can happen uh, g3 bishop g5 and then f4 and after exchanging uh, the pawns uh, bishop h4 king d2 and black have the king in the center this is one of these crazy sicilian defense lines where the king stays in the center it's not really recommended to castle on the king side it's very risky uh, with these two open files it can be really uh, extremely risky uh, but white also have some problems with the development have to coordinate the pieces hide the king as the king is still in the center as well uh, and um, and so on so this was possible uh, but Temur Rajabov don't want any complications he just wants to play solid game as he needs a draw in this game because he already won one of the games and, and this is the last chance for Daniel Dubov to actually equalize so this is why he played bishop h6 uh, and now g4 looks like very scary g4 g5 but then um, the bishop can come to f4 and of course the pawn cannot go back to g3 and uh, to kick the bishop so it's not the really the greatest idea so this is why we have bishop e2 and now you would ask okay why to play bishop e2 developing more move or something uh yes but also daniel dubov has a very very unique plan he want to bring this bishop to f5 and you would ask why it doesn't make much sense however look what happened so we had the castle bishop g4 uh, and now after bishop e6 first uh, king f1 was played and we have one game in the database where actually i think uh andrei sokolov play knight c to b4 uh, and he won that game after knight before knight before uh queen b6 uh, he actually castle so he hide his king in the safety here and after a5 this knight went to the to the d3 uh, but he won against the opponent who was you know uh 300 points lower in ranking so so, you know, a black stands slightly better here, but of course white won because of the of the strength of the of the player. So only one uh, game in the database. Uh, Daniel Dubov went for King F1. So this is very nice kind of castle as this rook after this H4 H5 experiments. Uh, this rook always can come to the to the G file, sometimes to the F file, uh, and attack the position of the king. And at the same time, the king on F1 if it's attacked for example uh, checked it always can go to the safe g1 square so that's the main idea here uh, we have queen d7 now threatening to win the bishop and now finally bishop f5 so what is the idea the idea is pretty tricky because now it looks like Daniel Dubov just you know uh, blundered the pawn however it's not the case here because the pawn cannot be taken because if the pawn is taken this knight is lost it cannot be defended this knight also cannot be taken because we're gonna have not this but we're gonna have very beautiful fork here so that would be completely losing and if you try to defend it doesn't really matter because you still gonna lose uh, the queen so uh that's of course not possible as well so this is why king ha was played by uh, Temur rajabov so now there are no tricks with the with the check this way or another is not coming with the check uh, and now we have queen h5 supporting the bishop uh, and here the engine recommends b4 and says okay this is much stronger uh for black however uh look at this uh if white plays for example g4 
g5 this looks like the the most obvious continuation uh b takes on c3 b takes on c3 and now black can uh take the bishop however white gonna open the g file for the attack so uh it's you know always you have to calculate uh what to do uh if you move the the knight probably you would force white to exchange the knights and after queen e7 and g5 there is always g6 move uh so after uh queen h6 g takes on f5 and again you have to be ready for for h5 and then g6 and the queen together with the rook gonna gonna stay on the h file so you have to be very careful and this is what a temur rajabov would like to avoid because you know you have three pieces in front of your king the knight may be gonna jump somehow to f6 uh you cannot do anything because then your bishop is hanging uh, and also there are another ideas here which uh, Daniel Dubov can you know bring like a like the rabbit from the magic ma magician hat and you don't know what is going on you don't want to risk uh, when you have the three pieces in front of your king uh, you know to risk the the losing game you just need the draw so very simple bishop f5 by Tehmur Rajabov and now queen f5 of course is possible actually is the best move in the position but that also means that Tehmur uh, could exchange the queens and uh, for Daniel Dubov it would be uh, more difficult to to win without the, the queen uh, for example f6 just consolidating this position stabilizing everything and even if g4 a5 uh, rook g1 is played this bishop still can go uh, for example to f4 and there is no decisive attack on the position of the king so this is why we have e takes on f5 uh, and now as f6 is coming and if this pawn is ever moved then the bishop is hanging this is why we have f6 blocking that possibility and now rook d1 now rook d1 prepares to take the pawn on the on the d6 so the idea is very simple lift the rook uh, double the rooks and attack on d6 this is the the weakness and for now the pawn cannot be pushed and in the right moment moment this knight gonna jump somewhere and uh, and of course this pawn gonna be vulnerable we have a5 so termur said uh i i don't really care uh, if you attack my my pawn it still need couple of moves we have rook h3 so daniel dubov um continues his plan and now we have rook b to e8 to support this pawn uh, in marching so it looks like okay it's not that dangerous uh, the supporting pawns are actually blocked so that's not really possible uh but look what just happened rook h to d3 and now we have e4 saying where you gonna move your rook because if you still want to stay on the d file then i'm controlling d4 and uh, then i'm also controlling d2 so your rook would have to move to e3 to g3 which actually are the best moves in the position Position, but these moves are also quite passive so uh this is why here daniel dubov played boom i have knight f6 and now saying okay my uh, knight is under attack my rook is under attack but i'm also attacking your queen and your rook what are you gonna do uh you cannot take with the pawn of course because first uh, you don't take the bishop but first rook d6 uh, with the attack on the queen so queen g7 and now rook c6 so the idea is simple this knight gonna jump to e6 bring the rook to c7 and control all the seven rank another rook gonna join and of course win the game this would be uh, just too much uh, for black to handle uh so this is why we have rook f6 uh, and now we have boom rook d6 as planned because the rook was under attack uh dubov doesn't want to bring the rook to the passive position so now we have rook d6 it looks like pretty uh insane indeed uh, daniel dubov actually sacrificed whole piece so now what is the best answer for black uh black actually should take the rook and after rook d6 uh this rook cannot be taken uh because we're gonna have the checkmate so that's not possible but queen c8 solves all the problems as the 
Knight is defended and the rook is defended uh, and the queen is attacking the rook. Of course, if you take the, the knight, uh, then the rook is going to be uh, defended still. So probably something like rook e6 and after rook e6, f takes on e6, queen e6, uh, queen b5 and black has one extra bishop for two pawns. Uh, so probably that would be an uh, easy win for black. And uh, that uh, was the chance for Teymur Rajabov, but he spent quite a lot of time. Uh, Daniel Dubov plays really, really uh, aggressive and very complicated chess, uh, and he played rook f5, saying, okay, if you take my queen, I'm gonna take your queen as well. Uh, but Daniel Dubov went for uh, the piece back. He want to win his piece back, uh, so we have rook c6 with the attack on the uh, on the queen, and now if the, the rook is taken, then this rook is hanging. So first we have rook f2 winning back the pawn. So uh, at the end of the of this combination Daniel Dubov wanted to be ahead one, one of the pawns uh, but this of course is the strongest move in the position winning back the pawn uh, and also making this pawn. You see how dangerous this pawn is? Uh, all the supporters of this pawns actually disappeared from the board but this pawn is extremely extremely strong. So we have king f2 and now queen c6 uh, and now it's very tempting to play knight d4 but then this rook can move to f8 for now it's under uh, under pressure so the queen uh, cannot move too far uh, but rook f8 with the check and then the queen can come to f6 and black would have very strong attack on the on the f5 also the bishop can join uh, and uh, control them the h2 so that could be very very unpleasant uh, so this is why we have king g1 immediately and now as this pawn gonna be uh, gonna be lost because the knight um, d4 is coming with the double attack on this pawn together with the rook and the queen then Termur Rajabov decided okay I'm gonna uh, give my pawn but this way on my terms so c takes on b4 a takes on b4 we have knight b4 and now queen b6 delivering a check and also attacking the knight but the knight cannot be taken because the queen is still pointing at the rook on e8 and it cannot come with the check with the tempo here so we have simply have a king h1 and now rook f1 and now white has the move what to do uh centralize the knight somehow give this this pawn for free for example a uh, knight c2 maybe that would be the best option uh, however we have a3 so daniel dubov actually want to keep both of the pawns and now we have e3 uh, we also have queen e5 now going behind the pawn and here Taimur rajabov with the seconds on the clock actually make his move with the one second on the clock Boom! Queen g6 and one second on the clock. Uh, 10 seconds incrementation, so there is no problem. He still have 11 um, uh, seconds. However, Daniel Dubov, from 2 minutes and 30 seconds, he started to think in this position. And he spent 2 minutes, more than 2 minutes. So uh, what happened after this move, uh, Teymur Rajabov equalized the time. So this was the, the chance for Daniel Dubov to play immediately knight d5 centralizing the knight and, and this was the best move in the position however he played that move after two minutes and Taimur Rajabov immediately strike to c2 so he calculate during Daniel Dubov time all the variations and now he came in the in the really good move now the rook is under attack and, and now interesting that rook d4 is the only not losing move in this position and it's not that easy to decide because it's also not winning because after rook d4 that means these pawns are lost uh, and yes this pawn can be eliminated however after queen a3 and exchanging everything we are gonna have completely symmetrical uh, pawn structure a uh, queen and the rook so this is just dead draw not possible to do anything this is why we have rook g1 uh, and now queen f2 threatening the checkmate uh, if the queen is moved anywhere uh, and uh, now what 
to play as white. Probably knight c3 was the best uh, in the position taking under control e2, uh, but it's also not so clear because after e2 uh, and even, of course, the queen cannot take it because we're gonna have the checkmate for now is defending uh, by, you know, by, by this block, but that would not be possible anymore. Uh, so knight e2 probably, uh, but then bishop e3 is very strong and now uh, the knight is under attack and the knight cannot be moved because there is the checkmate on g1. So probably something like queen h5 defending, but then simply uh, kick the queen. Uh, so queen g4, now rook f4 still kicking the queen, uh, queen c8 maybe, uh, king g7, uh, and after queen b7, uh, rook f7, and there is the problem, you don't have the move defending the knight and also defending h4. So that would be completely losing. And of course, the pawn is more important. Uh, otherwise, that's going to be the checkmate. So uh, the knight going to be lost uh, and probably the game. Yes, white have these two pawns connected past pawns. But, you know, bishop is usually uh, much, much stronger. And also the rook can join the attack and so on. So it would be very, very difficult to actually continue as white. So we have queen e7 now taking care of the rook. So if the queen uh, moves somewhere, then of course we're gonna have the checkmate. Uh, so here we have simply e2. And now we have knight c3. So uh, Daniel Dubov want to just win this pawn. However, uh, he cannot do that uh, really easy. What black could do is rook g8 or a lot of moves actually winning here and again uh, this pawn cannot be taken by the queen because of the checkmate or uh, also cannot be taken by the knight because of the bishop e3 and we're gonna have the same problem that the knight gonna be lost uh, so uh, Teimur Rajabov has a very very uh, easy way to, to win but he choose bishop g5 and now saying uh, you don't have much choice uh, your move is forced otherwise I'm gonna checkmate you so this is why we have queen g5 uh, so the sacrifice uh, got accepted and what is the point of course now uh, winning the exchange so um, we have rook e1 queen e1 king h2 and of course we have the queen and the knight for the rook and the and the queen but of course this two pawns are still on the board so uh yeah it's still a lot to play we have h6 and now queen g3 uh we also have queen c1 going after uh, both of these pawns and uh, not that easy to defend actually the queen cannot defend at all uh because the rook controlling both of the squares so that's not even possible and also if you try knight a4 the knight gonna be far far away from the action uh, rook f1 and now we're gonna have the checkmate even queen b8 the defending the pawn doesn't work because after king h7 uh, and knight c3 we're gonna have queen e1 uh, and again we're gonna have a checkmate here uh, and uh, yeah even king h3 then we're gonna have h5 checkmate is coming not much can be done here so that would be completely losing this is why we have queen d6 now going after the rook, but of course the rook can come to f1 uh, and now uh, starting the king's hunt. Uh, we have queen d8 with the check, king h7, queen d3 with the check, king h8, uh, Teimur Ajabov is happy with the, with the draw, so a uh, threefold repetition, no problem for him, and uh, this is why we have knight e4, Daniel Dubov brings the last piece to the game, uh, and he says, okay, you can take my pawns, but first we have rook h1 with the check, king g3, and only now queen b2, we have queen d8 with check, king h7, queen d3, uh, threatening maybe some discoveries, uh, uh, on the attack on the rook and discover check uh, but now we have queen e5 with the check king g4 uh, and queen e6 uh, queen f4 and now rook h4 uh, king e3 and now rook g4 with the very simple threat of making a skewer and winning the queen. So king has to go back to f3, but now we have queen f5, king e3. Uh, there is no uh, pin now, so uh, rook g3 doesn't work, but queen f4 works as a charm because after king d4 and queen d6, Daniel Dubov resigned. And why did he resign? Because he has to move the, the king and now Termut just gonna uh, exchange the queens and this is of course completely winning for 
for black as black have two connected past pawns and the rook in any moment uh, can be exchanged uh, for this pawn even if this pawn uh, somehow gonna make the the way to to a8 that is gonna be just too late so for example if king goes to c5 uh, and move the pawn uh, on e4 this king has to support but the rook gonna stay behind and this pawns of course are uh, gonna win the game so that is the problem this is why after queen d6 daniel dubov resigned and i would like to show you what happened in other semi-finals so as i said levon aronian played against maxim vashila graf levon won three to one uh, and uh, Temur rajabov also won three to one uh, he won um, i think first or, or second game and daniel dubov was in the must win situation in this game so uh, he could draw a couple of times but he had to fight for the win and today we're gonna have another semi-final so if you don't want to miss other games uh, of the Earthings masters 2020 press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one